Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley, and I'm an American actress and a TV host, and I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real-life relationship. It's just, it's well-written. It's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter, and it's very well done. I'm going to highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia. He is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing. Available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Sonic Web Studios specializes in custom web design, app development, social networking, search engine optimization, domain registration, email marketing, online stores, and more. Since our birth, we have been designing and developing immaculate websites and providing web solutions which are a cut above the rest. As a leading web designing enterprise, we have a team of extremely talented web designers designers who are well-focused and have the experience of working on multiple web developing platforms such as PHP, Magento, Custom WordPress, and more. Sonic Web Studios has been helping businesses of all kinds, whether big, small, established, or startup, impress their audiences with exemplary web solutions. We don't just create beautiful and functional websites. We give you a complete online solution with the main goal of enhancing your yearly revenues. We aim to give your business the online exposure and brand acknowledgement that will help you in achieving increased conversions leading to profitable sales. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. It's time to give a shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international award-winning author, Mian Mosin Zia. If you love fast-paced mysteries, then you'll love Missing by Mian Mosin Zia. Available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries with two strangers and one target where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first to go missing. It's available in paperback and ebook on Amazon. Missing by Mia Mosin Zia has garnered great reviews and is even loved by Hollywood celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forbes Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today. Order Missing by Mia Mosin Zia. Now available at Amazon. It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, iTunes, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and the themikewagnershow.com. Mike brings you great guests and interesting people from all across the globe. So sit back, relax, and enjoy another great episode of the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. Powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit our line at sonicwebstudios.com for all you need. Looking for a professional website without breaking your budget? Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give a shout out to our brand new official sponsor, international award winning author, Mian Mosin Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, then you'll love Missing by Mian Mosin Zia. Available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, and one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love be the first to go missing. It's available on paperback and ebook on Amazon. Missing by Mian Mosin Zia has garnered great reviews and is even loved by Hollywood celebrities, including Joanne Cassidy, Forbes Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today, Missing by Mian Mosin Zia, available on Amazon. Also, the Mike Widener Show can be heard on themikewidenershow.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, and Apple. Coming soon to Podbean, Buzzsprout, Pandora, and TuneIn. Heard worldwide on Radio Public, Geo7, Himalaya, and more. 
Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel and follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with a wonderful American director, producer, and independent filmmaker, having directed such actors as John Hurd, Tara Page, Robert Picardo, Vincent Pastore, Glennis O'Connor, Jeremy London, Ryan Hurst, Dan Grimaldi, Michelle Lee, and a host of others, including Kelly Maroney and Olivia DeBow and more. And he also has produced um, a number of movies out there like now, like Girl with a Gun, Occupants, Restoration of Paradise. And he's got a brand new um, film that will be coming out as well, too. He'll be glad to talk about that. And live, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plus Studios somewhere in California, ladies and gentlemen, the very, very, very multi-talented American director, producer, and independent filmmaker, the groundbreaking Russ Emanuel. Russ, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. And good night. <laughs> <laughs> you missed that one. No, I'm kidding. Hey, how you doing? I, I, I was getting some flashbacks from the Tonight Show outfits like Johnny Carson, <laughs> Jay Leno, Craig Ferguson, or Conan O'Brien. Yeah. You went... Whoa! <laughs> There's so many throw it back me that I should be on the Tonight Show or something. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> well, we're doing. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, that's no worries. I mean, it's great to have you on, Russ. So, so you basically have been uh, directing, producing, and uh, being an independent filmmaker for quite some time. You directed such great actors like John Hurd, Tara Page, Robert Picardo, Vincent Pastore, Glennis O'Connor, Eileen Dietz, Kelly Maroney, and a lot more, including uh, Olivia Dubo and more. And you also got some um, films out there like Chasing the Green, Girl with the Gun, PJ, Collar, and more. And uh, you also have a brand new uh, film that's coming out you'd love to talk about. And before we do all that, uh, tell us how I first got started, Russ. How I got started. Hmm. <laughs> well, you know, um, my, um, I guess since I was a kid, one thing I really loved was uh, film music, and especially that of uh, John Williams, uh, the composer of like Star Wars, uh, Indiana Jones, Harry Potter, and etc. Um, and for me, um, I think it was his music to Jurassic Park, uh, and I was like 15 or 16 when that movie came out, and it, it just really did it for me. You know, when I listened to his score uh, during the helicopter sequence at the beginning of the film, and with the acting and the cinematography, it, it was just movie magic, um, and, and I was pretty hooked. I mean, I, I listened to his music before that, like Superman and whatnot, um, but, you know, th that really just... I, I guess made me want to, you know, pursue filmmaking professionally. Mm -hmm. um, and when in 1994, 95, I did this uh, student project in high school. Uh, and I lived, I was living in Japan at the time, uh, a school called Canadian Academy. It's an international school in mm -hmm. Kobe, Japan. And we had to do a project for our senior uh, year where it basically took all, you know, time, effort and money over that school year. And I decided to do an episode of Star Trek. Deep oh, Space wow. Nine. I'm, a, I'm a Star Trek fan. So, um, ah, live long and prosper. I'm doing, I'm doing the Spock right now. I mean, I wish I could do it um, audio version, but, uh, you know, COVID or no COVID, um, you know, social distancing, it's like live long and prosper, no matter how, how many feet we are, even it's like past six feet. Well, you know, I meant when you do the uh, the Vulcan salute, you don't shake hands, so it's actually good for social distancing. <laughs> <laughs> but but but, yeah. but is that lo but is that logical, sir? Is that logical? Uh, I to quote Spock, why not? Hey, but <laughs> <laughs> so, so I so yeah, so I did a Star Trek episode, and of course, you know, it was a student project. I was what seventeen at the time. Um, and, you know, basically at the end of the school year, they showed the film in the auditorium um, and I actually sold copies. So I was kind of like my own mini entrepreneur and I sold copies on VHS. That's how long ago this was. Wow. I still got yeah, my own VCR. I wish I could buy one from you. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. It's not very good by today's standards. So I may have to say no to that one. <laughs> but, um, but, but, but it was good enough to get me into uh, USC cinema, the University of Southern California cinema um, program, the critical studies program. So I went to USC. Um, and then after I graduated from USC, I took UCLA extension courses. And yes, I, if you know the USC UCLA rivalry, 
Yes, mm-hmm. I just did a big no-no. However, I think both <laughs> schools are very good. So that's just my own. That That's where I stand on that issue. So I went to UCLA Extension after I gradu- graduated from USC. Um, and I met my uh, future filmmaking partner, Emil Harris, uh, at one of the courses there. Um, and then we, we did two um, short films. Um, one was called Her Night and one was called Girl with Gun. And it's Girl with Gun, the one that you mentioned, the one with Michelle Lee. Mm-hmm. Who was just in, I think, Venom. You know, she was in the first half of Venom. Uh-huh. Um, and Michelle Lee was in that film. Tracy O'Connor was uh, her co-lead, uh, co-star, I guess. Um, and that film, Girl with Gun, uh, we did like 2004, I think. And it basically got into places like Comic-Con, which is the one in San Diego. Uh-huh. And just, just other festivals and won a lot of awards. And it, it got the attention of my future uh, feature film producer Howard Nash. Oh wow! Who saw him and basically, you know, um, decided to hire me to do PJ, the one that you mentioned, PJ with John Hurd, the uh, late P- John Hurd, mm-hmm. the Home Alone. Right. And, yeah. And um, so PJ, which is now Heaven's Messenger, by the way, and Heaven's Messenger, you can actually see for anybody who wants to on uh, Amazon, Amazon Prime. Or uh, for free on 2B TV, just FYI. So we did that film, and that was um, I was 29 at the time, and uh, basically it was like a trial by fire because I've never done a feature. I'm directing John Hurd as my lead actor, not not just an actor, not like a cameo, but he was my lead actor. You know, mm-hmm. this is a guy I watched growing up, like in films like Big or Home Alone. So, you know, it was kind of scary. <laughs> and, and because John was um, attached, so was people like Star Trek's Robert Picardo, um, Vincent Pastore of The Sopranos, um, you know, Glynis O'Connor, Kelly Kate Eisenberg, who was the Pepsi girl. Um, you know, and it was just... It, it was just a very surreal event, you know, to have just a star-studded cast mm-hmm. um, on my first feature. And we shot in New York over, like, 16 days. And I'm from Los Angeles, um, technically Huntington Beach, which is, like, Orange County, but I still say Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. So, so you know, I mean, it, it was – it was I, I was, like, living out of my suitcase uh, for about three weeks, you know, in New York. And it, it, it was just very surreal. And because of that film, uh, we also were um, with my uh, composer at the time. His name was Neil Argo, who unfortunately passed away a couple years ago. Uh, but with him, uh, he had worked on like Beverly Hills 90210. Anyway, so he was gracious enough to attach himself to me uh, with the short films and now PJ. And we actually did a score, a, a professional score, like orchestra. I recorded an orchestra score uh, in May of 2007, and it was just a very, you know, surreal event to have directed a feature film by the time I was 30. It was like one of my goals, you know, uh-huh. um, 29. So, you know, I turned 30 that year. <laughs> wow, amazing. <laughs> so, uh, and then not only that, right after, as we were finishing that, I got hired to direct my second feature film called Chasing the Green, the one that you mentioned, which is now called Big Shots. And Big Shots, again, is, you know, on Amazon Prime and Tubi TV for anybody who wants to watch. Um, and that film, you know, um, had Robert Picardo again, but also had, like, Jeremy London, A Party of Five, Ryan Hurst um, of, uh, what's that show, uh, Sons of Anarchy? Mm-hmm. Uh, and he was also, had been directed by Steven Spielberg in Saving Private Ryan. Um, and it was just, you know, it was just so surreal. And then this is a big one for me. William Devane was in the film. I directed somebody who was directed by Alfred Hitchcock, you know, in his last film, Family Plot. So it not only was I directing somebody who was directed by Steven Spielberg, I was directing another actor who was directed by Alfred Hitchcock. Oh, my <laughs> <And> goodness. <laughs> it, it was it was a very... Uh, it was surreal. And again, this uh, I actually, um, on that feature, which was, again, for like two, three weeks we shot, um, I, I celebrated my birthday on set. Wow. And amazing. I, Happy or, birthday. My, my 30th birthday, not just a birthday, my 30th birthday. I was celebrating my 30th birthday on set. Um, and I remember, yeah, Ryan Hurst was there. Um, you know, Jeremy London was there. Heather McComb was there. 
uh, from Party of Five also, and um, Dan Grimaldi was there. And, you know, we, we had the extras, we had the crew, and my producer got me a pineapple cake. And, oh, my uh, gosh. I'm... It, was, it was so, it was such a memorable, I mean, it was so memorable just to be able to, you know, it was surreal. It was very surreal. So, anyway, I was directing my second feature film with all these name actors when I turned 30. And my goal had always been to direct a feature film, not just one. But now I was directing two. But I wow! <laughs> so, so, so you know, I mean, that, that my, you know, I mean, I, I was incredibly grateful, and because of that, we, um, you know, and Howard Nash produced all these, by the way, all the features is Howard Nash. So I have, I owe so much to to Howard. It's not funny. Um, my third film was Robert Picardo in the main role, The Legends of Mathia, um, and that one we shot in. Uh, Los Angeles. So uh, Chase and the Green and the PJ were shot in New York. Nathai was shot in Los Angeles. And yeah, Picardo. So that was then my, at that time, my third time I was working with Bob Picardo. Uh, then we did uh, our fourth feature film called Occupants. And again, Bob Picardo was, you know, in that film. And uh, Occupants uh, really took off for me. And um, it won the top prize, one of the top prizes. Uh, for best sci-fi feature at Shriekfest, and Shriekfest is one of the top genre festivals, mm -hmm. um, especially uh, in the regionally in Los Angeles. And we actually, we uh, screened at the um, was it the uh, Charles Chaplin Theater at uh, Regency Studios, uh, which is you know uh, one of the oldest film studios. I think it was founded by Charles Chaplin. Uh, uh, was it Mary Pickford? What? Oh, I may be what? What? What is that? that? Was that United yeah. Artists they uh, they formed um, Charlie Chaplin and Mary Pickford? Was it did they form United Artists as well? Yeah, I think so. Yes, I think they were also United Artists. Yeah, I I specific uh, I specifically remember United Artists because I was talking to somebody about uh, when they when there was a thing you you worked for MGM you had to work for MGM you worked for Columbia you worked for Columbia or you worked for Warner Brothers you had to work for Warner Brothers you could not intermingle with MGM Columbia Warner Brothers or anything like that and Charlie Chaplin and Mary Pickford and a group of others you know they said this is ridiculous we can just choose um whatever we want the salary we want and who we want to work with so they went off and formed United Artists and the whole thing with the loyalty of um you're employed by MGM Columbia Warner Brothers and all that pretty much fell apart afterwards so i think that was very significant in hollywood at the time you know mary pickford and charlie chaplin and getting others to form united artists i mean that was an interesting story yeah no it definitely was and that was what i think the tens am i saying that right the tens the 1910s now because Not now we have the 20 Nineteen tens. Let's see. I'm I'm thinking maybe twenties, thirties, forties, but it was somewhere along those lines. I mean, I I, I think that was probably it. And um, and of course, we'll talk a little bit about your films as well too, and some of your favorites. We're going to take a quick time out first. Listen to the Mike Wagner Show at the Mike Show dot com, powered by Soundweb Studios. Visit online at SonicWebStudios dot com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs at below the competition way. Call today, 1 800 303 3960. That's 1 800 303 3960. Or email to support at SonicWebStudios.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, it's time to give a shout out to our official sponsor, international award winning author Mian Mosin Zia. It's, if you like fast-paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Mosin Zia. Available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those who love be the first to go missing. It's available on paperback and ebook on Amazon. Missing by Mia Mosin Zia has garnered great reviews and is loved by Hollywood celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forbes Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today of Missing by Mia Mosin Zia, available on Amazon. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the MikeWagnerShow.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, Apple, and more. Coming soon to Podbean, Buzzsprout, Pandora, and TuneIn. I heard worldwide on Geo7, Radio Public, Himalaya, and more. Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. And follow the Mike Reiner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with American director, producer, and independent filmmaker Russ Emanuel here on the Mike Wagner Show and talked about some of the great actors he's worked with, Howard Nash, and also um, 
you know, talked about some of the films he's been in. And um, let's talk a few more as well, too. But first, um, this kind of came to mind. Um, what are some of your favorite movies that you enjoyed growing up? Uh, well, before before I get to that, I have to make a correction. I said Regency. It was Rally Studios. Oh, Rally Studios. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I apologize. My mind is uh, not as young as it used to be. Oh, uh, hey, hey, I'm a, I'm a, cha- I challenge you to that one. I've been in radio since 1982. You know, start getting out of high school and starting radio in 1982 at college. I challenge you on that one. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Well, let's just say I think your mind is sharper than mine. Uh, but I well, there are days, you. there are days it can kind of uh, go off. That's why I have to drink more coffee than ever. But I mean, we're not here to talk about how sharp minds are. But you're pretty sharp at what you're doing. So well, I mean, we're, we forgive you if you forget the name of the um a studio no, or I, whatever I, it is but i mean we love what you do so let's continue talking about some of your favorite movies and getting back to some other things and more <laughs> I mean, look, I, you know for the movies um i grew up on films like star wars and steven spielberg's films and alfred hitchcock's films um and i definitely this is more tv but also movies it's the star trek franchise you mm-hmm. know um i grew up on that so i am very very much into i guess like those type of blockbuster films uh, i went to usc and usc had graduates like uh, george lucas you know the founder of star wars uh robert zemeckis who did back to the future trilogy which i think is fantastic uh ron howard who did like apollo 13 um and of course he was an actor before you know before he was a director mm-hmm. but you have like that and you have people associated with usc like steven spielberg you know who, right uh-huh rejected for usc but you know he um obviously you know is a very well-renowned director <laughs> so usc's you know, loss um, is uh someone else's gain yeah yeah and who would you I mean, what would have happened if he had been accepted to usc who knows you know would he have made the films that he had today who knows that's you know? a very good point but, I, I don't know, you know, uh, but yeah, so I, I grew up with that mentality. I, I especially love Star Trek, especially Gene Roddenberry, who is the founder of Star Trek's uh, vision of a utopic future. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so and of course, film music is a big part of, you know, why I make films. So, you know, composers, composers like uh, John Williams, Jerry Goldsmith, James Horner, um, you know, I, you know, grew up listening to and, you know, I very much associate with, you know, their films that they have done. Um, but, yeah, I mean, if that answers your question, there really isn't like one particular one that, you know, that I would say like, maybe the Empire Breaks Back, I guess. But, yeah, I mean, I, I, there's a lot of films that I love. Mm-hmm. And how about some of your favorite actors and directors growing up? I mentioned Spielberg. I mentioned Hitchcock. Um, no. no and for Lucas, not as a director, but more as a uh, storyteller, I guess. And the fact that he was able to create this amazing franchise. This is something that, you know, I'm also inspired by, you know, is something we're trying to do with staycation. So I, I really look up to people like George Lucas when it comes to, you know, franchising. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, if that answers your question. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I think it does pretty good. It sounds like you're more focused on um, with Spielberg, Lucas, and and the greats as well too. And um, and of course, you, you talked about some of the other films. Maybe just a couple of more. I think we haven't touched on like Restoration of Paradise, Color, yeah. Routine, and maybe just uh, tell us a bit about that yeah. before we talk about uh, Staycation. Yeah. So uh, Restoration of Paradise is uh, uh, something I did um, in between Nathaya and uh occupants and uh robert picardo again was involved in that he was the narrator oh wow of documentary and i he actually did that for me as a favor uh for um yeah basically he didn't do it for 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 very much um but he did as a favor to me uh but it was uh something where uh about 10 years ago you know i meant it was kind of a darker time in my life and um uh, I, I relieve stress by walking in the uh, Bolsa Chica wetlands, which is near where I live. Um, and I decided to do a documentary about it. And, you know, basically on uh, the Bolsa Chica wetlands and, um, you know, its history and uh, why it's there and why it should still be there. And I focused on a group called Amigos de Bolsa Chica uh, who helped to uh, spearhead the uh, restoration 
of the wetlands um, because it had been like for a good hundred years um, turned into like a uh, a gun club, <laughs> uh, turned into uh, you know uh, oil fields, and so basically they helped the spearhead the restoration and restore it. And it's just a beautiful place to walk around. And I met uh, people like David and Margaret Carberg, um, good friends of mine, uh, Sharon Sikora, and uh, especially uh, Janine Berryman. Um, through Restoration of Paradise, and Janine and uh, Brad Munjo, um, you know, I met them because I was filming that, and Janine, um, she has been involved in all my films since then, um, and she did the poster for Occupants, she, uh, you know, did the poster for Collar, uh, is another film I did, um, and uh, The Assassin's Apprentice, another film I did, and we actually put uh, her cat, Finley. <laughs> I love cats. Perfect. So we put Finley, yeah, meow, meow, meow. So we <laughs> into no, we put Finley uh, into staycation. Uh, wow. Because because I grew up with Finley as a kitten, and he's not even two, so you know. Uh, for me, it was just um, I, I have very severe allergies, including asthma, so I can never own an animal. So I oh, look through, okay. uh, and, you know, my parents, three dogs, um, uh, you know, Finley and just name just keep going on and on, you know. So, you know, when I go to my parents place uh, to see, you know, uh, uh, Hana, to see uh, Candy and Momoko and uh, those are their dogs. And then the late my dog that passed away a couple of years ago, Charlie. Uh, but yeah, uh, my parents, just a shout out to them, Charles and Nikki and Emmanuel, they're just so supportive. And, um, you know, I wouldn't know what, I, I, I don't think I'd be here without, you know, their support. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, just getting back. So we did Restoration of Paradise. I met some really great people. Um, and uh, you can actually see that on Amazon. And I think Tubi TV also, Amazon Prime and Tubi TV. So Restoration of Paradise. Um, and then uh, after Occupants, I did one more feature film up to, to, to you know, that was released um, called American Whisper. And that one was the fifth time I worked with Howard Nash, my producer. And um, that one, again, is available on uh, Amazon Prime and Tubi TV, if you know, want to see. I keep mentioning those sites, but that's where our distributors, they, you know, they put them on to these sites, so. Um, that's where you can see that. So that film um, was, is a true story of uh, an African-American family. And then the, um, the husband, the protagonist, uh, Josiah Whisper, his family's murdered. And it's basically a story of who done it, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. It's a crime thrill, but it's based on a true story. And it actually uh, brings into uh, point uh, how the police departments in New Jersey and New York, because he was living in an uh, upscale neighborhood in New Jersey, but he owned businesses in Harlem, like bars, and they just did not communicate with each other, and that actually happened. And mm -hmm. so basically, uh, based on what happened last year um, in the United States with the police and whatnot, uh, it actually resonated with, um, with cert uh, certain people. Um, and it, that was not intentional because we filmed that three years ago, you know. So what happened last year uh, with the police and the Black Lives Matter and all that, uh, it was not intentional. But uh, obviously it was resonating with, you know, a certain group. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, I, I'm very, very proud of, you know, all five of my feature films. Um, I've also uh, worked with other producers. Uh, one is Paul Hickman. And with Paul Hickman, uh, we did uh, two Assassin's Apprentice films. And the Assassin's Apprentice, it stars, you mentioned Tara Page, um, you know, who, you know, is, is actually a pretty renowned stunt actress. And she's actually uh, been in films like Transformers and Alice in Wonderland. So mm -hmm. she's pretty awesome. And um, she's incredible at, uh, you know, um, uh, what's called parkour which is kind of like, you know, running and jumping and, you know, you know, parkour videos. You know what I'm talking about? Like run, Lolo, run. Yes. You know, yes, I do. I'm that. familiar with them. Oh, okay. So, yeah, she's very good at that. And uh, we did Assassin's Apprentice 1 and 2. And with those films, uh, I was able to work with more Star Trek actors, um, including Marina Sirtis, who was Counselor Troy in Star Trek The Next Generation. 
Uh, we, I worked again with Bob Picardo, you know, of Star Trek Voyager. So that that was my sixth time I'm working. I had worked with Bob Picardo. Um, we worked with uh, Armin Shimmerman, who was Quark on Star Trek: Deep Space Nine. Uh, Gary Graham was the Vulcan ambassador in Star Trek: Enterprise. Um, Tracy Coco, um, who was a a featured background Lieutenant J on the Next Generation, and she was on Deep Space Nine and Voyager. And then uh, my my good friend Sean Kenny. Uh, Sean is uh, was crippled Captain Pike in Star Trek: The Original Series. Uh -huh. So, and he has stories, amazing stories of Lucille Ball, of being on the set of the Enterprise. The oh my original. goodness! It's, he was there. He was there. And you know, Lucille Ball actually is the one who, you know, with Desi Lu Productions, she's the one who you know funded Star Trek in the first place. Mm -hmm. So, you, I, oh, we owe Star Trek to I Love Lucy. I did. Yeah. I did remember that, and I think she was what the the first female to uh, do so to run a studio and. Didn't, didn't uh, base it on, like, say, with MGM, Columbia, Warner Brothers, or even, like, you know, outside funds. They pretty much, you know, funded it themselves along with her husband, Desi, and um, and some investors. Yeah. That was, like, the first one they called Desi. I mean, I'm just so yeah. proud of those guys, despite um, marriage falling apart. But, I mean, it was just amazing yeah. what they've done. Yeah. Amazing. You know, it, it was, you know, and I, I, I love I loved Lucy. Uh, it's such a, it's a show that, you know, is timeless. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, Steel Ball is one of the instrument, instrumental reasons why Star Trek exists now. Mm -hmm. So, Sean, Sean Kenny, um, he was there. <laughs> he was there. He was there. He has stories about Gene Roddenberry, about, you know, Shatner and all of them. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd like right to there. talk to him about that and uh, give us his real thoughts on Shatner. It's like, he didn't use Priceline yeah. about this. That was not logical. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, you know, I'm not gonna say anything one way or the other, but you know, he was there with William Shatner, Leonard Nimoy, DeForest Kelly, all of them. You know, that is um, so amazing. Wow, Michelle, Michelle Nichols, all of them. Yeah, it, it was, um, it was something. You know, um, so yeah, we did that Assassin's Apprentice one and two, and with the second one with Paul Hickman, and God bless you, Paul, because he actually, uh, we did a skeleton shoot, uh, a pickup shoot for Assassin's Apprentice 2 uh, in the Canary Islands. And there's a reason why we went to the Canary Islands, by the way. If you watch 1 and 2, you'll understand. Uh, but we actually shot in the Canary Islands. And oh, wow. I didn't know where the Canary Islands were. I thought it was the Cayman Islands. <laughs> actually, it's like the Hawaii of Spain, and it's off the coast of North Africa. Wow. Yeah, so we went to uh, North Africa. <laughs> we we went we flew to North Africa. Uh, we we flew through. Uh, I flew through. I think Madrid, Madrid, Spain, uh, and then you know that was like nine hours from LAX to Madrid, and another three hours from Madrid to um, the Canary Islands. Um, so it, it was something. It was it was surreal. And yeah, so we filmed there, and this was right before COVID struck. Uh -huh. um, COVID nineteen struck right around like December twenty nineteen, I guess. Mm -hmm. Around around there, right? We we finished filming. Uh, we did uh, the location shoot in September, and then we finished filming the last shots in November. And yeah, we were lucky. We were very lucky to get those shots before that happened. So we did the assassin, or I did. You know, I directed all these films, right? And uh, I was the director for hire, and I'm just very grateful to Paul Hickman. My other producer is Troy Gabaldon, who hired me to direct a film called Collar. And Collar again is completely different from something like The Assassin's Apprentice, which is comedic action. Collar is a dramatic, uh, more like a mystery about a conversation between two priests um mm -hmm. and it, it actually gets into a little bit more action but yeah let's just say it's completely different for, from what you know the assassin's apprentice and uh the, the way i am i i could direct multiple genres and i have you know uh, from pj to to occupants which is horror pj was more you know like faith-based i mean you name it I, I i'm just i guess a chameleon chameleon in a sense uh -huh. but what i see what, what I do with every one of these films is I, I find, you know, uh, what, what, what the story's about, um, and I get into the characters' minds. That's how I, I direct, you know. Um, and for me, it's about the characters. It's about, you know, the performance. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, basically, you know, what what is, you know, their motivation? What is the story about? So that's how I'm able – that's how I direct, you know. Um, 
So, you know, now I think we're up to date now. That was the last film I did was, was like November 2019, right? And then COVID struck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is now getting to like staycation. Okay. Um, so do you want me to keep talking about staycation? Oh, well, well, you know something, too? Before we get to staycation, uh, <laughs> let's uh, tell everybody um, where can we find your films and what's your website? Oh, so uh, my my production site is uh, Russum Productions, which is a combination of my first and last names, uh -huh. Russ and Man. Okay. And you can find that's R-U-S-S-E-M, M as in Mary, dot com. Um, and if you go on there, there's links to all my films. Um, but where you can see a lot of these is Amazon Prime, uh, which I mentioned before, and Tubi TV, T-U-B-I TV. Okay. And on Tubi, free. It's free. So you don't. You just have to register, and that's it. It's free. That's Amazon Prime. Yeah, Prime. Then it's free. You know. That's a very um, nice part as well, too. And we'll talk about staycation in just a minute. You listen to the Mike Wagner Show at the Mike Show dot com, powered by Sonic Web Studios, and are sponsored by international war winning author Mia Motion Zia. We'll be back with act American director, producer, and independent filmmaker Russ Emanuel with staycation after this timeout. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley, and I'm an American actress and a TV host, and I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real-life relationship. It's just, it's well-written. It's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter, and it's very well done. I'm going to highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia. He is the author of Missing, and I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing, available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody, it's Mike from The Mike Widener Show. The Mike Widener Show can be heard on over 30 podcast platforms, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, Apple, and more. Coming soon to Podbeam, Buzzsprout, Pandora, and TuneIn, where The Mike Widener Show interviews great guests, cool conversation, lots of laughs, coffee, and more. Take The Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device, subscribe to The Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel, and follow The Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. Hey, hey, this is Ray Powers. And if there's one thing you can count on in these unpredictable times, it's that you're in good hands getting some great radio, courtesy of The Mike Wagner Show. We are back on The Mike Wagner Show with American director, producer, and independent filmmaker Russ Emanuel talking about staycation, and um, we also talk about his production company, Russ and Productions, and some of his uh, many great films, and um, this has been your uh, biggest project to date, and um, tell us all, all more about staycation, which stars some really good stars like Olivia Dubo, and we mentioned Sean Kenny and Tracy Coco, Eileen Dietz, mm -hmm. Kelly Maroney, Lorraine Landon, and more as well, so tell us more about the film. Okay, so uh, hi everybody, welcome back. <laughs> um, so so yeah, so I guess where I left off, COVID struck, right? And of course, COVID has pretty much affected everybody in the world. <laughs> uh huh. Uh, so w what the plan was was um, I've never had my own camera package. Um, you know, I've done five feature films. I've done these other films I mentioned, um, but I don't. I didn't have. I never invested in my own camera package. We always like, you know, uh, just just got it with, you know, wh whoever the director of photography was, they owned it or just, you know, we rented it. Right. And I'm like, you know what? Um, I think it's time. So I invested in a uh, 6K resolution camera mm -hmm. called a Sonic Lumix and 6, 6K uh, just for anybody who doesn't know. So uh, most TVs now, they've, uh, they're 4K. 4K is Ultra HD. Mm -hmm. and that's the resolution of HD, which is uh, 1920 by 1080 pixels. So that's times two. 
um, 6K then would be times three. <laughs> wow. And at some point, I think TVs will go to 6K. I think it'll go even you know, more resolution, 8K, 10K, whatever. But at, right now, I think the majority of TVs are 4K. So what I was thinking was, you know, invest in a camera package uh, where, you know, uh, we could shoot at a format that, you know, is not normal, you know, standard yet, but we can, you know, uh, down res to 4K and output at 4K resolution. Um, and this is for, you know, where I'm thinking about distribution, right? Um, and also with visual facts, you know, if you do it at 6K, um, it, let's say you do a drone shot. If, you know, a drone, you know, you fly in the air, and then let's say you have a camera attached, and then the wind blows and the camera shakes, and then, you know, to stabilize that footage, uh, what you need to do is uh, it, it takes, uh, you know, just uh, the outer footage, and it basically is able to shrink it down to stabilize the footage, right? But you lose resolution by doing that. So I was thinking you do 6K, you have an extra 2K to work with, right? Uh -huh. And you output it. So that's what I was thinking, you know. So I got this camera package, uh, very nice camera package and its accessories. And then COVID struck. Oh, <laughs> and, no. And, the was shut and it's like the Screen Actors Guild was shut down. Everybody was shut down. This was like March, March of uh, 2020, you know, and this really affected everybody. So, you know, I could not use Screen Actors Guild actors, you know, and every time you have a name actor, you know, like uh, Robert Picardo, they're they're SAG. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> There's no SAG. Oh There's my! There's no locations. Everybody is shut down. You know, it's a lockdown. So what do we do? Um, I decided uh, with my filmmaking partner, I mentioned him, Emil Harris, who's involved in all these films that you know I, I did over the last what 18 years, 19 years. Mm -hmm. Um, we decided, you know what? We have this camera package. Let's do a test, a camera test. So we did that. And we got a non-SAG actress. Her name, her name is uh, Paige Passell. Wonderful, wonderful person. Um, and we did a camera test with her, uh, Emil Harris, and myself. And that's it. And we filmed at my condo. Wow. Amazing. It's fine with it. Fine with it. And, you know, you know um, yeah, so it was a camera test. Um, but we did a short little story, a short story camera test, basically, called Routine. And Routine, uh, because we couldn't shoot, basically, outside – um, I decided, you know what, let's think outside the box. Um, and I hired my uh, comic book artist uh, who did a, a tie-in, the comic book tie-in to my feature occupants mm -hmm. named Dave Beatty. And Dave Beatty um, had drawn for DC and Marvel Comics. So he's a professional. And I, I asked him, can you draw the third act of routine? And he agreed. You know, and of course we paid and all that, um, but he drew the third act, you know, and then I colorized it. And because of, I think, thinking outside the box and with a wonderful score by Vasilis Molesis, who's my new composer since Occupants, um, it got into the top, one of the top genre festivals called Film Quest. Oh, wow. Which I've never any of my films and even Occupants. Mm -hmm. And I knew we had something, you know. We had something with routine. And routine, uh, I mentioned how I, you know, uh, always admired people like George Lucas with franchising. You know, I could add J.J. Abrams as another person, you know, where he's basically created franchises, right? He put in his, his Kelvin burst, if, if that's the term. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he interspersed certain products throughout his films. You know, Quentin Tarantino did this, too, in all of his films. So... Uh, I found that very fascinating. So I was thinking of routine. Uh, well, I started with like, with occupants. We kind of did that with the, the comic book tie-in, you know. So it tied into the film itself. It actually took place during, uh, I think, the first or second act of Occupants: The Feature, and it, and the major characters in Occupants: The Feature became minor characters in Occupants: The Comic Book, and vice versa. So it was interesting, and I was fascinated by that. And I, this is one reason I invest in this camera package is so that we can franchise, right? Mm -hmm. Create something, create something that I own. You know, I, I am the producer. I am the head producer. I'm not just a director for hire. Um, and that's 
you know, the principal reason that we did this. So with routine, we knew we had something. We got into Film Quest, and I never got to any of my films in the Film Quest. We got into Coney Island. I never got to any of my films in that festival. So I knew we had something. Um, and Harris came up with this brilliant idea called Staycation. And Staycation and routine, um, and the re re reason I mentioned routine, because Staycation is actually the sequel to routine. And it's Amazing. tied together. All together. So again, the franchise is already there because, you know, we already have a, a prequel film and now we have the sequel. And, um, and and he created this about, you know, there's a global lockdown, you know, there's a pandemic, a global pandemic uh, routine, of course, is part of this. Um, where, you know, people are stuck in their homes um, and, you know, they, they, you know, have to wear face masks and they have to be careful. Does this sound familiar? <laughs> this, <laughs> going through? Yeah, well, that's that was the point. You know, the point is people are going to think it's COVID, but it's not COVID. It's this is actually a horror franchise. And I'm not going to say what type of horror, but let's just say it's definitely not COVID. Um, and because of you know how we sold this um i i was able to get investors interested in this film and we raised a certain amount of money that we we're able to film um in november of 2020 during COVID, and I, i'll get to that by the way for staycation but up this was like in an august and uh september and so these investors signed on some really wonderful people and um we got olivia dabo as you mentioned olivia is, is pretty big you know mm -hmm. um and we got sean kenny my friend sean um and we got tracy coco um you know and we got eileen deets of the exorcist um and we will be filming with uh, kelly moroni and lauren landon uh shortly um and i'll get to that too but up to that point so this is like august september right we got Olivia Dava, we had Sean Kenny and Tracy Coco attached. That was up to that point. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a big sell uh, to the investors. You know, we have name actors. You know, Olivia was just in Star Wars, Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. She was in that film. Um, she was one of the Jedi voices of the Jedi past who helped Ray defeat Palpatine. Uh huh. Um, you know, and she reprised her role from The Clone Wars, the, the uh, animated TV show. So. We had Olivia, we had Sean and Tracy with Star Trek, you know? And so I told them, we have the Star Wars and Star Trek fan base. Uh, it's a horror film, and horror sells. It's, it's like, it's just one of those genres that, that sell. Um, and, it's, and we're filming, um, it's about a global pandemic. And again, people all around the world could associate with this film, right? Because it's a global pandemic. Name actors, horror, global pandemic. Um, and then I was the, the last thing I uh, was able to sell is um, we're filming during COVID, and because of the lockdowns and uh, the severe COVID restrictions, not a lot of films are being produced right now. Not of what we're trying to do anyway. Mm -hmm. um, Makes sense. And so we became, we're now the exception, not the rule. So I'm saying we have content, and right now. Uh, if you know what's been happening with the film industry, um, you know, like uh, how many how many films like Wonder Woman 1984 or Tenant, they're not they're, they were released theatrically, but it was tepid, the response, because nobody wants to go to a movie theater right now because of COVID. Right. And of course, you who know? wants to wear a mask while watching a movie? It's like you're better no, off just watching at home. Sense. Yeah. So it's like, OK, so now the exhibitors are, you know, they're, they're kind of in financial trouble. Um, and they're desperate for content. And there was this one film that really intrigued me called uh, Host. And Host was done in the style that we are doing 40% of staycation in, which is people staring at the camera, you know, basically breaking the fourth wall. It's like found footage. And there's I, I, that that's the genre. There, there's another name for that genre. But it's like, you know, basically, you know, let's say people on Zoom or Skype or whatever, and they're, they're looking at the camera, right? And they're talking. Well, that's what that's what Host is. Uh, it's, a, it's a horror film, and it premiered on one of, I think, the top horror channel, Shudder. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned this film to my investors is it is 56 minutes long. It's not a feature, and it sold, and it was number one on Shudder. And I, wow. like, you know what? I think in my – I may be wrong. I may be completely wrong, uh, but I, I think it's because there's not a lot of content, and these, these uh, distributors, these exhibitors are starving for content. They want anything. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so I, that's how I sold it to the investors. And I, I truly believe that we have something with staycation and routine. You know, we have a franchise. Um, and we actually uh, have like in-universe products now, by the way, like Elgato cigarettes. And I, I, I have Ooh. the cat theme going. So Elgato is actually cat. Ah, uh, we have a brandy. Yeah, we're creating more stuff, by the way. So, so we filmed during COVID, right? November. Um, and we filmed at a wonderful place called Envision A Studios in Burbank, California. Uh, because we had stars like Olivia Dabo and Sean, we had to go um, the Screen Actors Guild. And we went to the uh, Screen Actors Guild ultra low budget. Uh, because of that, it was very severe uh, in terms of our budget. <laughs> it was much more than we thought it would be. Uh, one sixth of our budget had to was because of COVID, COVID restriction, a COVID compliance officer, um, PPE kits, uh, air filtration units, because we filmed inside, uh, COVID testing. And it cost us a pretty penny. Uh, so what happened was we filmed, but we did film. We filmed, we got it done. We got the filming done. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very happy we got it done. Uh, but we were also in the hall. That's why I started this, uh, what we're talking about now, the Indiegogo campaign, mm -hmm. which is crowdfunding for staycation. Uh, because it literally just bankrupted us. <laughs> right, filming yeah. Mm -hmm. it was, there's a reason why nobody's filming during COVID, and we found out the hard way. Um, fortunately, um, this, the uh, staycation Indiegogo campaign is now at $23,500, I think around there. So uh -huh. we're over our goal of what was 20,000, you know, mm -hmm. so it's like 118% right now. Mm -hmm. And we're very fortunate, uh, but we, we, we set the campaign goal for 60 days, right? Because with uh, crowdfunding, you could do like 45 days or 60 days, I think, or you can even do less, but we just decided to do 60. That's the maximum. We reached a hundred percent in 30 days. Wow. Uh, amazing. The heck out of me. Mm -hmm. And I, you know what, you know, what are we going to do? Just, just stop. I'm going, no. So, uh, one, th one, one thing that, um, that we decided to do. So, so here's, here's the deal with staycation. 40% of the film is, is filmed in the style that I was mentioning, like host and films like unfriended and searching with John Cho, uh, which is, you know, people staring at the camera. It, I, I don't know if it's called found footage for this type or I, I, there's another name for it, but basically it's a global pandemic, right? And it's in a horror genre. But let's say who's affected by a global pandemic? Everyone. So 40% of the film is going to be in the style of um, different uh, people all around the world talking about their experiences, about what's going on in their world about the global pandemic. And our writer, which is Emil Harris, is writing them very nice parts. And so we decided, you know what, we can actually do a cameo perk in, in, you know, for Indiegogo for $500. Okay. And okay. we actually got a lot of people to say they want to do this. And so we basically are now able to film more scenes. And Staycation, by the way, is the first 25% of a feature. And people like Olivia and Sean Kenny and Tracy Coco, they all know they're coming back, you know, for the, the other 75%. But now we're going, okay, we reached 100%. And, you know, these cameos, we can film more. So we're now actually funding for the feature <laughs> that's where we are right now we're, we're you know it's growing mm -hmm. you know there's you know and and you know um my my investors are happy uh the actors seem to be happy you know um yeah i'm, I'm just you know that that's where we are. we're, mm -hmm. we're just writing and, the momentum if you will and, so and, you know, and that's what we're now, now what are the perks that the people get when they uh donate like say they donate 5 10 15 20 50 okay. 100 500 it's like you know if they if they donate a certain amount what do they get Oh uh, well let's say okay so the lowest amount is 3 bucks and I would have gone lower and I but I can't Indiegogo won't let me <laughs> $3 is the minimum amount that I could put on Indiegogo so it's three bucks. It's just, just, the, it's just supporting us. You know, it's just very minimal. But you go on, you go up. Um, you can actually get uh, like IMDb credit, and IMDb is the Internet Movie Database. So anybody who likes that and wants a credit in our film and on the IMDb, uh, there's parts like the SCP IMDb Special Thanks for nine bucks. You know. Uh, you can do a download of the digital film for eleven bucks. I mean, you go, you keep going up there. 
Um, there's uh, one credit I think that you and I talked about, right? That you might be interested, the IMDb credit for thanks at $27, right? Yeah, and, and, what's, uh, been, and what's been the most popular one? Well, let's see. That one, I think, is 31 have claimed that one already. Oh, wow. Okay, uh, so is that the highest uh, right now? Well, I, I don't know if it's the highest. I'm looking at the records. 19 claimed the $57 one, DVD limited edition. Um, I'm going 15 claimed the IMDb credit special thanks at $77. Uh, let's see, there's the poster of Staycation. That's going to have all five of the name actors. They're going to sign it. Um, and that's $85. And eight people claimed that. Um, uh, on screen, you, there's Cameo roles right and there's the minimal cameo role is 113 dollars uh on screen with uh scoops and mischief which is a clown uh, a famous clown duo who's going to be on the film and you get imdb credit and that's 113 dollars so oh nice people claim that. yeah and there's a very special thanks under 77 dollars four people claim that um there's uh i was mentioning the uh cameo perk right the 500 dollars one that one is actually more popular than I thought it would be. Because <laughs> people, people want to be in the movies. That's the thing. Even well, if yeah. it's on Skype yeah. or <laughs> Zoom or whatever. I mean, look, I, I don't. And, and with the I, – I, I, I hate asking for money for people to act in the film. I really do. And I wouldn't do that if we didn't have a choice. And in the beginning, it was um, you know, the fact that we were literally bankrupted um, uh -huh. from the November. That's why this Indiegogo campaign was happening in the first place. Now we're actually filming for the feature. You know, because we're getting to that point. So nine people have claimed the cameo perk. Okay. And twelve other. There's nine out of twenty-one. So there's twelve more available for anybody who wants to do that. Um, and you keep going on. Now we have product placement in the and the minimum product placement. Product placement is like you know you get your company uh, logo or uh, you know a audio shout out or whatever you know that's going to be in the film for your your uh, product placement. And we already have two people um, who's going to have product placement of their actual uh, product. One is Trap House Burgers. Wow. It's going to be in the film. And it's going to be in the film. And that, that it's, it's, so either we're creating in universe products that are not real, like El Gato cigarettes and Havine brandy, or we're, we're actually featuring whoever wants to be, you know, product placement okay. uh, of your of your company or their company or whoever's company or, you know, or your, your brand or logo or whatever, you know, it can be in the film. And so we have those perks and the minimum starts at $500. Uh, and then you can get like uh, post-production associate credit or post-production executive credit or associate producer credit or co-producer credit. And you can go on and up and up and up. Um, and, you know, these perks, the levels are even mm -hmm. you know much higher. So the highest perk is co-executive producer credit, and that's three thousand seventy-seven dollars. Wow! And I, nobody would claim that perk. You know, mm -hmm. who would claim the, the the highest perk? Guess what? One person claimed that perk, and that shocked me. <laughs> <laughs> of they course, why not ask the name? So <laughs> no, no, but they get everything. They get all the things I mentioned. You know. IMDb credits, uh, well, not cameos in the film, but what they get is the DVD, they get the shout outs, uh, they get in invitations to world premiere. I mean, you name it, they get it all. It, it's like uh, the whole shebang. So as the credits get bigger for most of them, it, it, it's it's basically like a domino effect. You get more and more and more. You know, mm -hmm. and, you know um, that truly does sound amazing. And how can people help or contribute? Where do they go? Uh, so if you go to Indiegogo.com, you type staycation, it should pop up and you'll see the poster of the film and you'll see, you know, featuring the actors I mentioned, Olivia Dabo, Sean Kenny. Um, you know, I, I could provide your, your, um, you, uh, your station with the lo the link. I, I don't know if, you know, you can help we can, publicize it for well, people well, who are interested. Well, well, actually we can talk more about it off the air, but, uh, keep going. So, you know, I mean, it's, um. Let's see here. It's Indiegogo.com forward slash projects forward slash staycation pen every quarter film with Star Trek actors, see, which is a very long thing. So that's why I didn't want to give that link. <laughs> Who's going to remember that yes, link? Yes, yes, but yeah, it is logical. And if you do click, you live long and prosper. No, <laughs> but if you go to Indiegogo.com and just type staycation or staycation horror film or staycation star trek any of those you know combination of words it will come up 
Okay. Okay, yeah. so, sounds good. We will do so. And we're here with um, American director, producer, and independent filmmaker Russ Emanuel here on the Mike Wagner Show. A very big thank you for your time, Russ. You've been absolutely fantastic. I love to go on a staycation, the real thing. Not get killed or slashed, but just to relax and get away from the COVID. And lastly, just a couple more things. Who do you consider biggest influence in your career? My biggest influence in my career? Uh, well, I meant I, I mentioned if it's just people like Spielberg or Lucas or Hitchcock or people that I've worked with, like Emil Harris or, you know, Howard Nash, you know, or Paul Hickman or Trey Gabaldon, you know, just, yeah, Robert Picardo. Okay. And what's the best, what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? Uh, about what? About COVID? It, <laughs> or, <laughs> how do I hear any more about COVID? None of us do. But best advice in general, I think we should just stick to uh, generalities. Yeah. Get away from COVID and pandemic. <laughs> uh, well, when it comes to filmmaking, anybody who's aspiring, you know, the good thing about, you know, uh, about living in 2021 versus, you know, or growing up in 2021 versus when I grew up is you have, uh, you know, things like the iPhone. You know, which is a camera, which is a film camera. And uh, if you have like the iPhone 10, you could shoot in 4K resolution and you can make your own films. Mm -hmm. You know, back in my day, you know, you had to use, uh, I don't know, a video camera. Oh, (laughs) yeah. Those things. Uh, They're like dinosaurs nowadays or something. It's like supposedly handheld, but they're a lot bigger handheld back then. So. No, I mean, it's just, um, you know, it's, it's it's much easier to make a film now than it is back then. So um, if that's any advice, you know, just, you know, just shoot something, you know, mm-hmm. just shoot it. That's shoot a, a film. I think I'll do that after we get off here. I've got my regular phone and I'll do that as well. And uh, what's the best advice you can <laughs> yeah. give to anybody at this point? Uh, or, oh, oh wait, well, wait, wait, do we, did I ask that already? Best advice? I'm sorry. No, no. But here's one advice. It's the tagline of staycation. Do not take a vacation from staycation. Ah, uh, <laughs> I think that's a very good point. Many of us need a vacation from staycation, staycation from vacation, a vacation from vacation, or a staycation from staycation. And yeah, we can go on and on here. Once again, director, film producer, Russ Emanuel here on the Mike Wagner Show talking about staycation. Russ, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to having you again soon. Do us a favor. Keep us up to date. Love you back on 2021 and beyond. And lastly, tell us about your upcoming projects. What's your website? How do people contact you? Where can uh, people uh, purchase or check out your works? And also, how can people uh, contribute to Staycation? Uh, you, you, well, the links I mentioned before, um, you know, like the uh, on Indiegogo.com, um, uh, you can go to uh, Amazon, you can go to 2 TV. you type in my name, Russ, R-U-S-S, Emmanuel, E-M-A-N-U-E-L, uh, my films will pop up. Um, you know, I mentioned uh, Big Shots, I mentioned Heaven's Messenger, Restoration of Paradise, uh, American Whisper, they will all pop up. Um, and, you know, if you go to my production sites, you know, I have links to all that, uh, russm.com, R-U-S-S-E-M.com. So, uh, yeah, um, Mike, thank you so much for having me. I really do appreciate it. And uh, looking forward to having it again soon. Do us a favor. Keep us up to date, Russ. We'd love you back in 2020 and beyond. And let's keep in touch and um, live long and prosper. And let's stay logical. And peace and long life. You're a P-A-L-L, a pal. <laughs> the Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Sonic Web Studios specializes in custom web design, app development, social networking, search engine optimization, domain registration, email marketing, online stores, and more. Since our birth, we have been designing and developing immaculate websites and providing web solutions which are a cut above the rest. As a leading web designing enterprise, we have a team of extremely talented web designers Designers who are well focused and have the experience of working on multiple web developing platforms such as PHP, Magento, Custom WordPress, and more. Sonic Web Studios has been helping businesses of all kinds, whether big, small, established, or startup, impress their audiences with exemplary web solutions. We don't just create beautiful and functional websites, we give you a complete online solution with the main goal of enhancing your yearly revenues. We aim to give your business the online exposure and brand acknowledgement that will help you in achieving increased conversions leading to profitable sales. Call 1-800-303-3960.
or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley, and I'm an American actress and a TV host, and I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real-life relationship. It's just, it's well-written. It's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter, and it's very well done. I'm going to highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia, he is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamoshenzea.com. Missing, available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Please support our program with your donations at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again next time for another great episode of The Mike Wagner Show. 